Medbach gets broken down into sedimentary particles that can be transported um, by various processes. So that breakdown of rock into smaller pieces that are able to be transported is the process of weathering. And there are two general classes of weathering. One is a physical breaking of the rocks, and the other is a chemical alteration of the rocks. And they both uh, produce sedimentary particles. So for weathering, we have the physical breaking of rocks. Right, so some of those uh, processes um, include uh, freeze-thaw cycling. And obviously, this happens where, what, where it's in climates where the water can actually freeze. So what happens in that case is that you might have a little fracture in a rock. So here's your rock. And when it's warm, a little bit of water can filter down into this fracture, uh, liquid water. And then as water freezes, it uh, expands. Ice floats on water because it's less dense than that ice. So as it freezes, it puts a force onto the rock on either side, and the crack tends to propagate. So this is, this is a process that's uh, really common in um, cold areas where you get this process. So this process is really common in cold areas where the um, temperatures get low enough to uh, freeze uh, the water in these cracks. If it's too cold and the, the water never melts, it's, a, it's a difficult for this to happen. That's why I describe this as a rock, but it can also happen uh, between uh, crystal grains. So say, for example, I have um, some crystals here, a little bit of water can squeeze in between the crystals. And those boundaries between crystals, say in a granitic rock that has large uh, feldspars and quartz, um, can actually, it often breaks um, along crystal boundaries. So a local example of, of where this type of process happens significantly would be uh, Yosemite National Park, where we have granitic plutons, um, and uh, the freeze-thaw cycling is, is and um, one of the ways that break the rocks to make those, those um, beautiful cliffs. So another uh, way th that um, you can get physical weathering uh, is with salt crystal formation. And this is very similar uh, to the, the freeze-thaw cycling in that in this particular case, you have a rock with a fracture in it, and uh, my water is gonna be a different color this time, instead of blue, right? So you end up with water in here. And if there are ions in that water, say you're near the ocean, the water evaporates, and as it evaporates, uh, salt crystals form. Yeah, I'll make those another color. All right, so you can get halite forming or carbonate or gypsum. And when those crystals form, again, they put force on the crack, on the, on the sides of the crack and uh, force it open. So this salt crystal formation happens in places where you have a lot, uh, near the ocean, where you have a lot of uh, salt spray. So um, a third process is simply with temperature changes. So this is, is less efficient 
but the basic idea with the temperature changes, um, when something's hot, it expands. When it gets warmer, it expands. And when it gets cold, it contracts. And that's true of uh, rocks and minerals in rocks and grains in, in rocks. And particularly since the grains and minerals can be different colors, they will have different temperatures and, and the different mineral properties will also make them expand and contract at, um, at different rates. So a dark grain will absorb more heat than a white grain when it's sitting in the sun, and so it will end up getting hotter. So we have these, these temperature changes that are due to the thermal uh, expansion of minerals and grains. So this is uh, particularly noticeable in eras with intense sun and when you have hot days and cold nights. So for example, out in the desert uh, after a hot day when the sun goes down, there's a lot of heat gets radiated um, into the atmosphere from the rocks. And I've, I've been in uh, Joshua Tree National Monument, and you can actually sometimes hear little pings coming from the rock as, as the minerals are cooling off, and, and you ending up breaking the connections between the crystals and the rock. So this uh, is a lot like the freeze-thaw cycling when I said that some of the water can get between the crystal boundaries and force the crystals apart. That's, that's uh, a big process in, in the, the temperature cycling. And then there are also a, a number of other ways that rocks break. So for example, uh, if there's an avalanche of rock uh, as it lands, it, it breaks up. So collisions uh, between rocks when they're in transport uh, break them up. And then of course you could have something like a, a meteorite impact um, would cause a, a lot of fracturing of the rocks as well. So chemical weathering processes are significantly different than the physical ones. In, this, in the case of chemical weathering, what you, you have is you have a reaction uh, between water and, and the minerals in the rock. Okay. And, and there are multiple uh, types of reactions that can happen that depend on the mineral and the composition of the water. But in general, we're going to categorize this into, into two di distinct types. One is dissolution. And the second one is alteration. In, in dissolution, the main idea is that you have a mineral and you have water and it rea they react to form ions and of course and the water. So basically the ions will just flow with the water and this process does not actually produce any sedimentary grains on its own. Right. So if you just have straight di dissolution, you have no uh, sediment grains produced. However, uh, you can produce grains of, say, uh, a one mineral that dissolves quite well. An example would be uh, halite, which is basically table salt, or uh, carbonate minerals calcium carbonate, are ones that, that um, tend to dissolve. So those will just go to sodium and chlorine and calcium and bicarbonate ions. Um, they, this process can produce grains if, for example, there's a mineral that doesn't dissolve mixed in with these. So a, a lot of times there's a little bit of quartz in uh, uh, carbonate rock, and those quartz grains will be left over from the pro process of dissolution. But the main idea is that it produces ions that then go flow with the water and um, don't affect the sediment transport itself. 
So alteration is um, a process where you basically have minerals plus water and it goes to ions water and new minerals so an example of that would be say a feldspar uh, says a uh, plagioclase which is a calcium feldspar When it reacts uh, with water, it tends to produce calcium ions and clay minerals, okay? And so the alteration uh, produces new minerals. And these can be, act as sedimentary particles. Okay? So this alteration is one of the main processes that give us mud grains. Um, so I mentioned the clay minerals, and you can also have um, iron oxides are, are pretty common, or other metal oxides. Okay? So what happens with the chemical weathering is you're basically altering the rock into new minerals or dissolving it and creating ions. With the physical weathering, you're just breaking it down into smaller pieces. Thanks for watching.